Done deals, personal terms agreed and signings made by Liverpool, Arsenal and Onana to Manchester United. We're delving into all of that this morning. Hit the like and share button. But Liverpool fans, be excited. Arsenal fans, number three is done. And Man United, Onana is on his way. Hit the like button. Hit the bell notification button as well. Let's do this. It's been a brilliant start to the summer transfer window for Arsenal. And this news from Mike Vervel, the leading Dutch sports journalist, has claimed that both Arsenal and Ajax want to wait until the 1st of July, that's today, to officially register the Urian Timber deal. This way, the sale counts in the new accounting year um, and would make um, Ajax able to spend the money on new signings, where if it came in last year, it may have been eaten up by some debts they had or, or whatever it may be. We've seen a lot of this now being broadcasted as to why deals are being delayed, why some clubs wait until July to do more of their signings in June because of FFP regulations. But that aside, this is a highly credible source. The deal is done. If it's been delayed until today to complete the deal, then we know that everything is in place. We know that all the details are taken care of. It's simply a matter of admin. That's all this comes down to and as to why, as of now, the deal hasn't been formally announced. There hasn't been an official here we go from Fabrizio Romano. Arsenal haven't put out a holding tweet or any messages. But it is a done deal. It's over the line. It's something that Arsenal fans, I know they want updates every day. I know all fans of all clubs want that. But you can relax. There's nothing to stress about. This deal is happening. This deal is over the line. It's simply a clerical admin situation as to why it has been delayed. So very, very exciting news for you. And what a player. We spoke about this for, for about two weeks now. But to reiterate again, this kid is phenomenal. He takes Arsenal to an absolute another level. He gives them, look, I don't think he's coming in for depth per se. This is somebody with the ability to play first team for Arsenal. This isn't a free signing of a 29-year-old journeyman who's coming in to be a backup to the main right back or the main centre back. This is a kid, 22 years of age, part of the Dutch national team. The guy's won Eredivisie Player of the Year. He has very high standards for himself. He is coming to Arsenal with the objective to become a first-team player. So he may not start in the first-team match game week one in the Premier League, but it doesn't mean he isn't a first-team player. He isn't a fringe player. He's part of the first-team squad. He'll be one of the main 14 to 15 players used this season across the Premier League and Champions League by Mikel Arteta. His versatility will also help him. I know there are some people that are very negative these days about versatility. They see it as a, uh, the club cutting corners and being cheap. I don't necessarily agree. We've seen many, many a player be versatile. Pep Guardiola has utilized the versatility of John Stones and Nathan Ake, just to name two, last season alone in a treble winning season. Are we calling Pep and City cheap? I think not. The great Sir Alex Ferguson used the likes of Wes Brown and John O'Shea, Darren Fletcher, Ryan Giggs. Wayne Rooney, David Beckham, Paul Scholes, in a very versatile way. Are we saying Man United under Fergie were cheap and penny pinched? No. Versatility is key. It's always been a component of brilliant football teams. And Arsenal have now given themselves more of that. So excellent business from them. Now, I want to move on to Liverpool. And this is officially from Fabrizio Romano. We saw the announcement last night um, that Liverpool have signed and done the deal for Dominic. Slobosly. Slobosly, Slobosly. Um, Here we go. Understood that RB Leipzig are now informed Liverpool uh, have triggered the release clause. That is 70 million euros. 
And I think, again, it goes to debunk the myth that Liverpool don't have money to spend or, or won't go above a certain amount. It's another big mega deal for them, around 62 million uh, British pounds to bring this individual in. Personal terms are already agreed. Medical tests are going to be done soon. And this is the fun another piece of phenomenal business by Liverpool. Maybe the Kones and the two Rams were a little bit of a, you know, a smoke screen, a red heron to take people's attention away from what they're really focusing on. Maybe this deal came about late on. Maybe the player wanted to wait, you know, personal terms, consider his options, what he wants to do next in his career. But this is a very dynamic, very, very technically gifted, talented midfield player with a very, very high ceiling that Liverpool are bringing in. You can't, you can't kind of deny that. This again, I'm very honest with these situations. Have I watched him play hundreds of games? No. So therefore, you would say, well, how can you know that he's really good? Well, when clubs get linked to him, I use a brilliant website called Y Scout, where every single statistic you can imagine is available, but then all the video evidence and video footage for the eye test accompanies every single statistic. So every in the last six years, even at youth level, every pass, every tackle, every mistake, every goal, every assist. Every element of GA, uh, XG, sorry, XA, uh, clearances, interceptions, any, anything, everything, every single jewel he's had is has video evidence and stats to back it up. And when you study this guy, there is real talent there. And at 22 years of age, he's at a, br he's at a brilliant time in his career as an attacking midfielder for Jurgen Klopp to school him, train him, nurture him turn him into a superstar player. Now, Hussam said something on the on Straight Facts yesterday, which really stood out to me, that Liverpool haven't had a top-class attacking midfielder since Steven Gerrard. And you could argue Philip Coutinho, but he often plays from the left as opposed to central midfield as an attacking midfield player. And I certainly think for Liverpool that their creativity, if it doesn't come down their wings, it lacks at times. They've lacked a real creative spark in the midfield for a long time. Someone who maybe can pick up a few goals for them as well, but that's been missing. So this is going to be a real interesting dynamic to see like where he fits in. He had a good year last last season. I think it was something like 18 assists, 12 goals in the in the Bundesliga, which is, um, sorry, that's so far in his Bundesliga career he's had that many. Last season, sorry, it was just um, I'm just double-checking that again now. Last year, sorry, eight goals and six assists last year, which is pretty good for a 22-year-old. And I think in the Liverpool system, that could increase further. So real potential in this signing. A big investment from FSG. But I will say this as well. I saw a few people online last night having a pop at Liverpool fans that complain about FSG. Uh, what are you moaning about now? You've just gone and dropped, you know, £62 million. You've done £35 million already. That's £100 million, and you moan about your owners. Liverpool fans have got every right to moan about their owners. The owners are only now fixing a problem they created by not investing in the midfield two years ago, three years ago, when they should have done, when Liverpool were probably the best team in the world. So they've got every right to criticise, every right to be frustrated, and every right to demand better from their football club. They absolutely do. But this is, without doubt, a phenomenal, phenomenal piece of business. Now, moving on to Manchester United, as of today, David De Gea is no longer a Manchester United player. He may still sign a new deal and return to the club. So all these weird countdowns online should stop. It's pretty pathetic. Wanting a new goalkeeper doesn't mean you should belittle someone that's given us 12, 12 years of his career. Yes, he's fallen off of late, but he still can be respected, have some decorum. A new claim here from Fabrizio Romano says Manchester United have the green light from Andre Onana to join the club. United will have direct contact with Inter in discussions of the price, 50 to 55 million plus add-ons. That comes from Fabrizio. But there have been so many reports on this deal in the past 24 hours from Damasio and many other Italian outlets. And last night as well, the, the official, um, the sorry, the uh, CEO of Inter Milan came out and said that our, our director uh, is working on it, but there is still no official bid from Manchester United at this time stage. However, they expect it to come from Manchester United imminently. So it's believed that Man United will be putting that bid in. I believe we're waiting until after the 30th of June, which is now passed because of FFP situations for accounting to be filed and a new financial year to start. But now that you've got Fabrizio's and Ornstein's, Ben Jacobs and many other Brit top level British journalists talking about this deal, 
It feels like something Man United are pursuing heavily. It feels like a bid is imminent. And the fact that player is now given the green light, which essentially means he has agreed to the personal terms verbally. That's my personal interpretation of what Fabrizio has told us. It marries up very closely with what the British press, sorry, the Italian press have been saying. So it's very much a case of watch this space. It feels as though Andre Onana will be the new number one at Manchester United. And we all know what a seismic improvement this deal can make for the football club. We all know. Better ability to play out from the back. Far more press resistant as a team. De Gea has given the ball away on average unforced 17 times per game. That was over the last 10 matches of, of the season. Plus, even his shot stopping has become poorer over the course of the past couple of years. And there are statistics out there you can go and research to back this up. I've already seen agendas begin, though, which is worrying, to say the least that if he comes in and Man United aren't world-class and we don't lose the ball in a press at the back and he, if he, he won't ever make a mistake, people are going to be on his back. And it's still quite sad to see so many negative false Man United fans out there that just, I think, just use the club to be negative so they get some attention online and maybe I shouldn't really pay them any mind and give them any attention. But th this isn't about polarisation. At the end of the day, Manchester United need to move on from David De Gea for whatever, you know, he's given us some great times, some bad times. Put all that aside, we need to move on. We need to drop sentiment, sentimentality on these issues and we need to become a better football team. It's as simple and as straightforward as that. Listen, do me a favor and hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribing. Of course, turn on those bell notifications as well. I know many, many of you have done that in the last few days, which is amazing. But you want to make sure that you don't miss any of our content that's coming out. But until next time, take care of yourselves. Goodbye, God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very 